So uh, netconf is a bit different from the uh, OpenFlow uh, in that, that this is a Yang modeled protocol capability driven. So in order to, so really you could think of the netconf if you worked with the MDSAL. Who of you here worked with the MDSAL? So netconf is practically remote MDSAL. You could view netconf as, a, as that. Uh, that would be better. Okay, so uh, netconf is a remote MD cell. So in order to achieve the netconf clustering, you actually need to achieve remoting of MD cell itself, or to have a basic support for remote MD cells. And uh, there is the other way how to solve that. The one way which Mois was thinking of is to have actually full mesh connectivity of free in the free node cluster that each node is connected to each netconf device. Okay, so Mike, right, and so explain the yourself. Tell you what I was <coughs> so essentially, the this, hello. Okay, this one. So what I was thinking of, I mean, it doesn't have to be like this. I just drew it this way. So you could have a fourth node over here, which is not connected to that netcon device at all. Um, but well, actually, I think. Uh, sorry, no, it was full mesh. <laughs> yeah, it was full mesh since we are free node, <laughs> and. Uh, given that uh, the rest conf, if you connect to any one node, you have always the accessibility to the device. Uh, that's the one solution to the problem. The second one, which I heard, is actually to do the proxying. So you don't have a full mesh connectivity, but internally we will load balance your request or forward your request to the node which is connected to the actual device. But has the pros and cons. Uh, currently, how the MD cell amount points and netconfs works, uh, full mesh connectivity is easy win for some of the, some of the use cases. Uh, for the use cases where you are just configuring the netconf device, reading the, the uh, operational data, this will be easy win. Uh, this will be easy in, so we'll just sync uh, configuration, uh, we will just sync the configuration and every node will connect to the net network device. Uh, given that, uh, the netconf itself was very optimized for high scale. Uh, this shouldn't be a problem. I single node audio instance is, ha is able to handle 10,000 sessions per single node. So having a full mesh there uh, isn't a problem. The problem actually with this solution is only if you start to listening and subscribing to the notification events. Uh, because uh, having that, f or not? Actually, who's doing that? Uh, no, uh, there, there will be a problem because it will be delivered in the local controller. So yeah, that, that's probably the solution. In the prox proxy will be harder. Uh, there are applications who are actually doing that. Getting It depends. Because once you start receiving notifications, How often you are receiving notifications in your apps uh, from the NetConf? It's only a few seconds. I know there are people out there who want to answer that question. So the, pro the problem is when something happens in a device and you get a burst, yeah. and it's at the least appropriate time when you start getting a lot of notifications. And that's the case that we have to design for. So it's much more like burst, nothing. Burst, burst and, uh, nothing. Uh, What happens when we get notifications like that? The first thing well, is do we, does NetConf know to send the notifications on all three connections or only? It would be only on one connection. On the connection on which you subscribed. So you could actually then do we that. We do need to split the subscription yeah. for notifications across different nodes. So which is fine. Yeah, yeah. which makes sense. But you have to support how, what throughput I want to support? Traffic model is, 
Yeah. It's, there's going to be a burst, a max burst that you got to support, and a sustained rate, right? Yeah. Sustained is trivial. Bursting is killing JVMs usually. Yeah, but that depends on your Netcom vendor. Yeah, but that is dependent on your Netcom vendor. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So for for the Netcom, uh, the requirements are mostly com coming from Jan currently. <laughs> I apologize. No, that, that, that's why I was saying, remember, I was talking to you. Can we delegate this proxy to the offline controllers so that it can scale in its own way? So, delegating the proxy outside the controller, you are, you are thinking about having three nodes here which are working with the network devices, and you have three nodes here which are doing the applications? As an external process to the controller. Yeah, which is like a gateway managing the pool of connections between switches and uh, in that way it can scale, right? Uh, that because what will happen in this particular case is one of the nodes is a proxy and instead of getting overloaded and you have space, then you have to transition to other nodes. Yeah. And that transition takes time and it kills us. It kills all other nodes. Are you saying that in terms of proxy you would be more than they like so, uh, it's a, it's a, it is a, just like if you're building a service tunnel, right? You want to have a tunnel proxy separately, not as part of your controller. So basically, uh, what do you mean in the term of the controller is? If it's talking to a gateway, you can talk And that get gateway is? Because actually, uh, given the SDN, given the SDN, yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out your terminology because given the SDN, for some people, controller is the gateway to connections. For some people, controller is the applications which are using these connections to uh, inject some net, uh, state into the network. I don't like term controller. They are just applications. Everything is just an application and how they interact. So uh, if, if I understand your model correctly, it's more like, I have a three node cluster of controller plus application here. And I have here some gateway, maybe in HA mode or standalone mode. And controller is accessing that gateway, which is terminating the network device network devices. So here. So actually And that's controller hierarchy. Controller, which is doing the log, uh, the controller which is doing the uh, application logic, and the controllers which are doing the protocol logic. If you want, if I want to build a very highly scalable platform for the controllers. I would build it that, yeah, you are able to run everything in the single node, but you could move separate services of that controller to separate nodes. Yeah, with the proxy you can actually terminate, uh, dedicate a couple of nodes in the controller. 
Yeah, so basically you, you, you moved from your monolith architecture and monolith controller to the microservices controller. Yeah, exactly. So why is this for the free node cluster? <laughs> I, am, I, am, I, I, am, I, I would be more interested in solving personally. That's my personal opinion, not as a MD Sal committer or project lead or something like that. My personal is moving to the microservices. Like you mentioned, I have a different nodes doing different things. But in order, okay, uh, okay, but in order to go there, we need to scope ourselves. Uh, usually, these sessions originally were intended the previous session and this session were by uh, the authors of these sessions were intended to figure out how we can provide application clustering or all the services which are promised by the MD SAL for, for major southbound protocols based on the lithium work. Lithium compatible using the, what is already there in the lithium with adding some glue on top of it. The second discussion which will be happening also is where we want to take it in the beryllium, boron, and next. There are, two there are two separate scopes of the work. And we need to keep a focus in order to not let us go out in the wild with the solutions. Yeah, actually I, actually I want to aim for that, to have some building blocks for the deployments, like you mentioned, that I scale different applications differently, and I have a termination, I have gateways for the southbound plugin ga terminations, gateway, yeah. And now the, the various nodes in the controller takes various roles. So your controller is much more, uh, it's not any more tightly coupled cluster of similar nodes one to one, it's a federation of the controllers or hierarchy. And I, I want to take that to the direction over the time. But we cannot do everything from scratch now. So what are we doing again for lithium? So we didn't get to solution yet. Okay, good. So shall we talk about that? Because <laughs> I think that's important. So Getting so so uh, it's not a federation in common sense. It's actually the dead architecture here is your application and that what was mentioned before, oh, cluster and awareness. Your application here, which is running OpenFlow, and was written, for example, let's imagine OpenFlow, NetConf, not, they are not similar, but let's assume similar problem. I have the something which terminates the 3CP connections and provides the so-called southbound plugin. I don't like uh, the terminology, but okay. Uh, it provides the southbound plugins may run in your JVM, in one JVM. That's what we have now. And over the time, you may want to run it on the, in somewhere else because your application requires a lot of uh, CPU power and protocol termination points requires a lot of, requires special amount of the CPU power for uh, some, some set of the connections. And what uh, that is talking, uh, this is talking about is much more like about lo uh, location and awareness that MD Sal or clustering services here, this is not tightly coupled cluster. This is not anymore since you have uh, different services, uh, different. It's not yet federation, but you are basically doing the microservices. Here, it is similar for you, you are still writing to the data store, but the data store for the OpenFlow plugin is located here, and this one acts on it. So, still, it's a tightly coupled cluster, but it's not doing one node is similar to the other. You have a specialized nodes in your cluster, and the glue, which is MDSAL plus clustering plus ACA, makes that possible. Actually, ACA, for example, also, which is clustering technology, doesn't require you to run the same services on all the nodes. Actually, ACA promotes running different services on different nodes. There is a pattern which is cluster-wide singleton in ACA. The 
So uh, actually, so actually, it's it's different. The plugin uses MD Sal to use Akka. So uh, and that actually leaves us uh, leaves us. We are not tied into the Akka. So uh, you could change the clustering technology underneath or that communication technology underneath based on your deployment and use case. If you have a resources to implement MD Sal APIs. But MDSAL is not one implementation. MDSAL is always a set of the communication patterns and different implementations. I mentioned itself, NetConf is a remote MDSAL. NetConf itself is implementing MDSAL APIs, but different than clustering. It's, it's implementing the MDSAL APIs in such a way that it delegates all the calls, trans it's translated to the NetConf message, and sends to, down to the buyer and responds you back. And that could be done using the RESTConf and other technologies which are available. For example, there is an effort which is exploring uh, removing of the MD SAL using the AMQP. So, connecting, so using uh, the message bus technology underneath instead of ACA. And uh, yeah, that will be the deployment specific option which probably, yeah, really depends on your deployment. And depends on your scaling numbers and everything. But what MDSAL is trying to achieve is to have a, that simpler APIs, how to communicate with the other plugins which may be located somewhere else. Or implemented using different APIs, using uh, not binding generated APIs, using DOM APIs. Or delegate to the remote. So MDSAL actually is doing uh, these proxies already. So once you are invoking an RPC, and that was mentioned in the OpenFlow plugin, so MDSAL has some of these technologies already in the place when you are invoking in the OpenFlow plugin RPC on the node one, and the device is, and the OpenFlow switch is connected to the node three, it actually delegates that and uses and transports the RPC to the node three, and that one does the, the work for you. So some of, the, uh, some of the technologies are already applied in the free node cluster, and could be used into the transition to, to this model over the time. So, so what do we plan to do for the free cluster? Alright, let me let me talk about what is my solution, okay? <laughs> then we can go into this. Uh, I think Tony doesn't like it because uh, it's not purely uh, the way it should be in Beryllium, right? So, um, so it's actually pretty simple. So you have three nodes, three controller instances. And from the north bound, using the restconf interface, you're going to like mount a netcon device. Right? So when you do this, what we will do is the request comes over here. So we actually can connect to this netcon device, get its schema, and load it on the controller. So now like any any uh, application within this controller instance can actually go ahead and invoke an RPC on this NetCon device or it could uh, do data changes or whatever, right? So that is all well and good. This we can do today. What, we, what needs to happen, however, is when you mount this NetCon device over here, that same configuration needs to be sent to all the other instances in the cluster. And once it's done there, then it goes ahead and mounts these devices too. So all the instances mount the device. What, what, what uh, the configuration of the NetCon connector. So basically, you configure all the free. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So they they all mount to it, but only one of these instances has to be the master. So first of all, you don't write uh, three nodes in inventory. You write only one node in inventory. And the second thing is, you want only one of these connections to be master connection. So let's say this was the master connection. Now any notifications generated by this. NetCon device will only come on this particular instance. Does it make sense? So the notifications come. It's never going to be active, active. It's not going to be active, active. It's going to be only one instance active. However, if let's say you try to invoke an RPC using the using RESTCon on this device, what we could do is we could temporarily open up this connection and do the RPC on this node and ter like you know terminate the connection. So this is. Except, except uh, the, there is one other thing in the NetConf, and some RPCs are tailored to the session on which you are sending them. And it's, for example, the notification creates subscription RPC, which then starts sending the events on the on this 
on the one on which that RPC was involved. Netcom is session less, is session protocol. It's based, and everything is based on the session. So if I invoke an RPC from here, I might get notifications over here. Is that what you say? Yeah. What if I terminate the connection? Then I won't get the notification over here. No. Right? You will not get the notification here. Okay, so I will miss out on It's the everything process. per session. Every state which you are introducing except committing the configuration is per session. Okay. Mo regarding the notifications mostly. How, how much time does it take uh, for the notification to arrive? I mean, can we assume something over there or not? It may take the moment. It may take five minutes. What so the, that okay, what's the downside uh, to this? Will, okay, no, uh, if I make an RPC request from here, the notification can never arrive over here, even if I have all active connections, per se? It will never ever arrive yeah. there. It will arrive on the same channel. Actually, you have a similar requirement in the OpenFlow plugin, uh, but uh, reverted. If you send the packet in on some channel, you need to send the packet out on the same channel. The controller needs to set to response to that packet in on the same channel if, you are, if your response is going to be packet out. Which is fine over there, but... Um, yeah, but uh, here is also tailored to the session. In this case, you're saying this is an RPC request and a notification will arrive because of that. Yeah, you could you could have a, you could send an RPC request which is uh, RFC five two seven seven create subscription down here, but that subscription is only for that one session. That session could create separate subscription with when different. You say RPC request to do a subscription. That's so specifically an RPC request for subscription. Yeah. So you could uh, so in the netconf you need to provision first state to the device to send a subscription, which is a create subscription model. So you need first send an RPC for device to start sending you events. Mm. Okay. So then it's going to Okay. What do you mean uh, the device changed state? Uh, changed. You need, no, you need here in the netconf, the, because netconf is proxy actually, you need very be, be very specific. If the device state change is that netconf started exporting a new model, all the three nodes currently, with current implementation will uh, rec uh, reconnect or drop the session and reconnects in order to download the new schemas and to start with the new schema context which changed. If the configuration on the device changed, uh, it's not for the controller. We are doing a proxy. So it means when you are reading data, we always go and fetch them from the device. And when you are writing, we always go directly and send. So if you imagine the MDSAL transaction, which is write, 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 submit, it actually, as you are invoking that methods it, in the netconf use case, it's translated. That's why I'm saying netconf is the is also the implementation of the MDSAL. They are implementing same APIs as the clustering is implementing. Uh, is that your write actually translates to the edit config message, which is directly at the moment is sent to the switch. So each your application, each what you are doing is edit config, edit config, edit config. And when you hit the submit, we send a commit message to the, to the netcom device. So uh, only state which MDSAL is maintaining, which is held in the controller about the netcom device, is actually the session, the credentials which we need to use to connect to the device, and the list of the models which were announced when the connection was uh, initiated. And if we are connected or not. Every device which you are pushing to, to the netconf is just a proxy. Everything is stored at, at the netcom device. Yeah. All right, Tony, uh, here's a question. So let's say I do a subscription over here from controller instance two. Okay. And controller instance two dies. Then what happens? Now anyway, you're not going to get. Uh, no notifications system, are right? going up. Yeah. So this is the same thing. Um, which we're talking about, where, like only case uh, here is, if this is alive, I still miss notifications because this connection is toned up. Yeah. In my case where you have connections, uh, come on. So what, what happens if you make a subscription on a session? The session actually connectivity goes down and then there's nothing to do. 
your subscription is that. Subscription is bound to the session. So, so you really the, the client needs to maintain. Uh, yeah, and we, and uh, that's, and there is a New Jersey class which maintains the subscription, listens on the events and resubscribe if the session goes down. And unfortunately there was a wrong name chosen for it, but that's the event source API and event source topology where you could specify subscribing to all the Netcom devices and maintain the subscription. So if the session goes down and goes up, it goes and resubscribes on the particular session. But this is not implemented into Netconf connector itself. It's a, an application running on top of the Netconf connector. Uh, because uh, if you look into the RFCs, uh, RFC 602041, which is Netconf, doesn't say anything about notification subscription. Notification subscription is separate feature capability, so the core NetConf protocol doesn't know about how to subscribe. So shouldn't that application actually cluster or share the information about the other nodes? Uh, that additional application? Yeah. The additional application is actually storing that information in the, uh, in the network topology, <coughs> in the data store, so it has the information where to subscribe and when to subscribe. Saying that there is a like an RPC for subscription or subscription yeah. is a there is an RPC for subscription in NetConf. And 52? 77. Yeah, 5277, yeah. And when we subscribe, you're saying that data actually gets stored in the data store. The uh, no, no, there is the other application, which provides you higher level APIs, which is subscribe to all the NetConf devices to the, the this topic, to the this uh, subscriptions. That's the it was incorrectly called originally message bus, but that's the event source thingy, which actually goes and then listens if the network network device disconnected, connected, starts sending that subscription messages again to maintain the uh, flow intention of the application. So the application itself doesn't need to go and listen for the netconf sessions in order to resubscribe to the, uh, to resend that RPC for the notification. But that isn't implemented directly in the netconf connector because uh, RFC 5277 is j probably just one way how to do the subscription. Maybe some other vendors have their own ways and that's why we provided an application on top of it which is framework which allows you to implement the SPIs to have a common subscription model for NetConf and probably over for the other protocols. Okay, that's fine. So let's say we have that application running over here. Yeah. And you register, like you run, execute an RPC and that application actually stores that uh, as configuration in the, into the data store, then why can't I invoke the RPC from here if I get if I have a listener over here? So if you invoke the RPC from here, you start receiving notifications which here. Which is fine, which is what I want because this is the master. Uh, is and the master. Where, where, where the application which actually triggered that is running. That's running over here. Okay, and now we need to get the notification here. So how many sessions will we have in one? There's only one active session. This there's a master session on all these sessions are not okay. actually used. Yeah, but you need now deliver the notification here. But where is the notification data? What happens to the notification? Why, why, do, why does the notification need to be delivered over here? Because application which actually no, consumes that notification no, is here. No, because it's a symmetric system, right? So the same application is running over here as well. Uh, right, but now you are assuming, and I'm not. I am assuming. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying about the event source topology and that application, application which used event source topology to that. And now we, ca we are coming to the assumptions about how applications works. Uh, if it's a symmet symmetric system, the applications could safely do their work only if they are sharing state. And you are not, a notification and RPCs are local state, which is not captured by the MD cell. It's not stored by MD cell, it's not replayed by MD cell. And if the application creates some state internally, some local state based on that. Yeah, that, I mean, that's different. That's the problem. I mean, okay, applications well, need to be. You can have multi class uh, being active on different nodes that actually all talk to the, to the, to the network and then on the device and receive the same or maybe different notification. Yeah, but that's fine because all the, if the notification arrived over here and the same app instances are running on but this you node. Guarantee that the app will be active running on that node. So we can, assume, we can assume that the app is running 
So, uh, Exactly, we do have a way to actually choose a master for an entity. I mean, we are going to make that available. So yeah, then you can do that. Piece. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we talked yeah. about it. Power over. We, we talked about it. Why can't you have both running a session, both of them checking each other's data and synchronizing? That's carrier drink, right? How do you, how do you check each other's data? What's that? How do you check? If, if they are they islands, just, then how do they check each other's data? That's that smart layer of people who I understand. Okay. The state yeah. of Bob. One says Bob is happy, one says Bob is happy, they actually match your signatures. One says Bob is happy, one says Bob is sad. Which one came last? That's part of the one that's important. Uh, what's is that? <laughs> All right, what you're saying is I'm just, I'm just trying to keep it abstract. Enough, okay. so we're not talk, worried about the details. Right? I'm just saying what, what's the issue? If you want, instead of having just one guy sending this stream, and then if he dies, you got this window where some data in there, both of them are putting the data in there, right. and one of them will win, one of them will lose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if you and, say that... And, and isn't that an interesting thing? If, if the data are different, that's actually kind of interesting. Maybe an application would want to know about that. Yeah, one will fail. One will fail. Well, one. often, one of the scenarios so the that happens is win. you think you're getting it, your data from Bob, you're actually getting it from Ted. Right? How do you detect that? Unless you're doing them both at the same time. It, it seems like everybody has slightly different concept or a slightly different thing that's important to them about NetCon. It, you know, maybe, you know, most people don't care about subscriptions, they just want to get yeah. registration, right? So it, it almost seems prudent to write down the, the restrictions that we need to design within and get that, that sort of documented to make sure, you know, we say, these are the restrictions we're designing within. Uh, we want to be able to do gets to a mounted game model on the mount that device on all three nodes, right? And that's a pretty simple use case that we want to support. I, I mean, just throwing off one of them, there's this whole idea of getting notifications. And I don't know what the restrictions and what the use cases are around that. I mean, ideally it would be if a node goes down, I would want to continue getting my registered notifications on the next node. You know, from, a, from a user's perspective, right? So Actually, I, I don't really know well, says that is important, so I'm saying I, I agree with him. But I don't know much about NetCon, I'm just saying, I'm just thinking in terms of, okay, this problem needs to be solved. Yep. What can I do to help solve this problem? Yeah, I'm just trying to determine that. So, and and I think he's the NetCon master. No, I'm not. Things <laughs> are, it's, it's important for us to sort of say, what are, what are the problems we're trying to solve? Like, you know, there is the whole question about performance, right? I think in the end, we just need to pick a number and say, we're trying to solve for this and just so that we can get some grounding and, and right now we're just we're throwing around different things and everybody's flopping around to different discussions. I think if we focus our discussions on, you know, let's brainstorm the requirements and then try and pick one and focus on it and then pick the next and see how we can roll it in. Okay. We might, we might actually need to, get to get to get to a, a design or some. Do you have an idea like of what is the requirement? I mean, should notifications work across the country? Yeah, we, so we perhaps feel. Notifications will be the problem because then you have to say faster. Yeah, because we we're, we're focusing on these notifications, but I mean, I think the configuration, in HA for configuration. So, the, the, the where is the problem if in HA for configuration with well, my we idea? Have, we don't have it, right? So we don't have anything. So, so with my idea, idea that would work. So, you, so uh, the first thing which is missing is, yeah, you want a netconf available NetConf session available from all the devices. Yeah. Two ways to achieve it. One, all the NetConf devices are connected, 
you have a measure of the connectivity. Second, you route to the node where there is. There are pros and cons in both of the solution. So requirements are there. So, so do we all agree that the two things we want are to be able to do a get to, you know, so to net comp device to one node in a cluster, do a get config to that Yang extension mount on any node as to see. That, that's, that's the basic requirement. That's the basic requirement. Do we just want to focus on that requirement or do we want to see if there's other requirements that So that get and change configuration, basically that's it. So just, just do a get. Get, edit. Okay. Okay. The same leadership service that we talked about. The open flow clustering. That's now. Future will be different. In the future, how will it be? Uh, I would choose mastership dat data driven, so I would try to collect the data where the applications are located, which are using the netconf server, yeah, and the master should be. That was the strategy yeah. we talked about. So leadership is going to be based on custom strategies. Let's call it that way. <laughs> actually, we will get to the point. Once the API is we will get to the point that actually. Each application you are writing is just an topology and you need to figure out the effect, effective routes in that topology and then you render, render that uh, topology into the underlying topology which, which are your containers, which are your VMs and you got... That's too abstract. Yeah. I think, I think that's too abstract. Your application is always layer seven topology and it never be different. I, I think we're technically... Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think even with your way the notification thing is going to work, right? Proxy, no, not yet. Uh, we'll figure out that at the table. Okay. Uh, we are top of the hour? Yeah, we are. Oh, we are two minutes. We have two minutes already. Yeah. No, no, we are two minutes over already. We need to continue this. I think you need to explain what you would do for Berlin and Bora. Because it looks like whatever solution I have, that, that won't solve the transparent and visible get itself was very optimized for high scale. Uh, this shouldn't be a problem, I, single node audio instance is, ha, is able to handle 10,000 sessions per single node. So having a full mesh there uh, isn't a problem. The problem actually with this solution is only if you start to listening and subscribing to the notification events. Uh, because uh, having that f or not, no, uh, there, there will be a problem because it will be delivered in the local controller. So yeah, that, that's probably the solution. In the prox proxy will be harder. Uh, there are applications who are actually doing that. Getting notifications, how often do those notifications come in? It depends. Because once you start receiving notifications... How often you are receiving notifications in your apps uh, from the NetConf?
So it's much more like burst, nothing. Burst, nothing. So uh, NetConf is a bit different from the uh, OpenFlow uh, in that, that this is a Yang modeled protocol capability driven. So in order to, so really you could think of the NetConf if you work with the MDSAL. Who of you here worked with the MDSAL? So NetConf is practically remote MDSAL. You could view NetConf as, a, as that. Uh, that would be better. Okay, so uh, NetConf is a remote MD cell. So in order to achieve the NetConf clustering, you actually need to achieve remoting of MD cell itself, or to have a basic support for remote MD cells. And uh, there is the other way how to solve that. The one way which Mois was thinking of is to have actually full mesh connectivity of free in the free node cluster that each node is connected to each NetConf device. Okay, so Mike right, and right, Yeah, but that depends on your NetConf vendor. <laughs> yeah. But that is dependent on your NetConf vendor. Yes. That's true. Yeah. So for for the netconf, uh, the requirements are mostly com coming from Jan currently. I think in this case the requirement is simple, right? You you mount a netconf device from one controller instance, and you should be able to access the RPCs and the data from any other instance in the right. 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 This how, is the requirement. How, do I, how do I judge whether the architecture is correct without knowing what I have to, what rate I have to sustain? Okay. Yeah, and of course we have a sequence. but you are trying to just solve. The That's what happens when we get notifications like that? The first team of the do we does NetConf know to send the notifications on the connections or only It would be only on one connection. On the connection on which you subscribe. So you could actually do that. Yeah, which makes sense. But how, what throughput I want to support? Traffic model is, right? Yeah. So it's, there's going to be a burst, a max burst that you got to support, and a sustained rate, right? Yeah. Sustained is trivial. Bursting is killing JVMs yeah. usually. Explain yourself. So essentially the Hello. Okay, this one. So what I was thinking of, I mean it doesn't have to be like this, I just drew it this way. So you could have a fourth node over here which is not connected to that netcon device at all. Um, but well actually I think uh, sorry, no, it was full mesh. <laughs> yeah, it was full mesh since we are free node. <laughs> and uh, given that uh, the rest conf, if you connect to any one node, you have always the accessibility to the device. Uh, that's the one solution to the problem. The second one, which I heard, is actually to do the proxying. So you don't have a full mesh connectivity, 
but internally we will load balance your request or forward your request to the node which is connected to the actual device. What has the pros and cons? Uh, currently, how the MD cell amount points and netconfs works, uh, full mesh connectivity is easy win for some of the, some of the use cases. Uh, for the use cases where you are just configuring the netconf device, reading the, the uh, operational data, this will be easy win. Uh, this will be easy in, so we'll just sync uh, configuration, uh, we will just sync the configuration and every node will connect to the net network device. Uh, given that, uh, 